Hi, well, hello everyone. Today we're going to to talk about a case study about coastal protection, which is ADA Coastal Sea Defense Project Ghana. Introduction Coastal protection is one of the methods to protect the coastal line. It also helps to stabilize the coastline and also to limit the amount of the overwash towards it. However, there are several types of coastal protection that are used to prevent the eruptions often in the area of the coastal line. Coastal line protections also can be known as a beach nourishment where you have two types which is hard engineering and soft engineering. For our case study, we are choosing the coastal protection for Ada in Ghana. Background of the project. As you can see the picture in the slide, it is one of the examples of the problem of the coastal line erosion. Coastal protection for Ada in Ghana was one of the major threats to the entire West African coast. In 2010, the Ghanaian government has decided to protect the coast in the Adda along the distance of about 10 km according to Kusimi 2012. However, the beach nourishment and the ground structure for the structural stabilizations are divided into two phases, which is the first phases are more focused to the most critical part near the Volta River mouth of Bill. First phases are done in summer 2013. However, for the second phases, it more focused to the remaining grounds and the beach nourishment are executive in this stage. It was done in 2014 to 2015. Construction cost and period. The cost for the coastal protection in Ada Ghana was about 240 million euro with the two phases period for 2013 until 2016. Since the construction of the project is 15 km more, stretch of the coastal bed, which were early, earlier lost along the Atlantic Ocean in the Ada East district in the Greater Accra, has been reclaimed. There are five parties involved in this case study, including their roles and responsibilities, which is client, contractors, designers, engineers, and quantity surveyors. As we all know, the client are responsible to provide a suitable budget to conduct any project, and the client need to know the conditions of the site and the topography of the beach. This is to ensure that the client have a specific information about the site of the project. Other than that, client need to monitor the construction process of the project as they need to aware of the environmental impact and take any prevention to avoid the impact to the nature and they also need to make a study on the monitoring concept for they still need to protect the nature of the beach. A designer are responsible to come up with a design to protect the coastal based on client requirement. But a designer need to study and investigate the conditions of site. As a designer need to recognize the causes of the erosion and come up with better design to protect the coast. This is to ensure that the coastal protection design are durable and high resistant towards the forces. Moreover, a designer have to aware with the changes of landscape throughout the year. For example, the sea level might be increases during the construction process. The contractor will be appointed to undertake the construction once the designers issue his final design according to the client requirement. A contractor should identify the suitable method of construction for the beach nourishment and growing structures. The method of construction will be based on the topography of the beach. Thus, the contractor need to perceive a specific information about the site. Other than that, 
the contractors need to perform the area surveys due to the changes of the landscape. This is to obtain current detailed pictures and topography of the beach. The engineers have to study on the wave forces which have caused the erosions of the coast. For example, the causes of the coastal erosion along the coast of our case study in Adakana are by the construction of the Tema Harbour. Thus, the engineer need to come up with durable and high resistant coast protection. Other than that, the engineer also need to be alert on the increases of the sea level. This can be affect the beach nourishment and construction of coin structure. It is a responsibility of a quantity surveyor to ensure that the project should be within the budget and satisfy all the client's requirement. In addition, the quantity surveyor need to ensure that the contractor implement the suitable construction method even they have to fit on a tight budget from the client. Other than that, quantity surveyor need to provide the work program which have been included the period of time to construct each of the elements. The measurement of the project should be based on the conditions of the site. For example, based on our case study, they have implemented the Met Ocean measurement campaigns for a year. This is to accumulate all this site-specific data as a basis for the design. Next is beach protection technique that is used for other four consisting of both hard and soft engineering techniques. For hard engineering techniques, the engineers decided to use groin and revetment and completed with soft engineering technique which is beach nourishment. First, hard engineering techniques that is applied as beach protection for Arafoa is groin. The groin is built as a physical barrier which intercepts sand moving along the shore. Each construction groins for Arafoa have its own purposes, based on the nourish bed to bed tree just before construction. There are two phases of groin constructions where the phase 2 groin will be built on the top of beach nourishment. There are few practical aspects to be considered for the groin construction. First, availability of sufficient mid stone, around 8 to 10 tons required for the protection. Second, the very long swell, where the peak wave periods of 10 to 20 seconds need to be considered as it can affect the construction progress. Third, occurrence of long wave and undertow, and finally, designed to provide sufficient protection against flooding while avoiding very steep beach. The next technique is revetment. The process is done by filling the geotextile tubes with in situ sand and water. The water permeates from the tube, leaving the sand in the tube, creating a steady and protective barrier on the shoreline for protection. Not only does it have a sand regulatory effects, but it is also effective in stabilizing the sand against extreme meteorological event as well as preventing it from water wash. As a finishing touch for the protection, the construction team applied beach nourishment for R4. The beach nourishment takes place after the construction of groins. The beach nourishment and the June heightening together will provide a buffer against beach erosion during storm event. Sand for the nourishment has been searched and sourced offshore in the vicinity of the project area. Sufficiently coarse sand has been found toward the west of the beach and dredged for the nourishment works. Purpose, Issues and Challenges in Gota in the Project Purpose of the project Adafoa and other surrounding villages have been suffering for ongoing erosion for a very long period of time. As a result of these various properties and existing infrastructures including schools, post office, public office, graveyard, factory, 
private residence and home, and roads are being damaged and destroyed. This coast stretch is also prone to flooding due to poor condition of beach and presence of extensive low-lying areas. In the event of the storms or other extreme weather conditions, overtopic severe flooding and other breachings of the sand barrier. This problem occur with possible loss of human life, property and livelihood. The pictures below are the example of the damage because of the erosions. Issues 1. The natural behavior of the coastal system 2. The influence of works on the coastal system 3. The effectiveness of the works on the coastal line and beach profile evolutions 4. Typical for remote and rather undeveloped areas a limited amount of data is available for literature. 5. No project team nor office were on site. Access to the right material on site was not evident. 6. The water level variations along the coast of Ghana is dominated by astronomical tide, since no long local wind storm occur and wind included, such as storm, surge is limited. 7. Tidal and wind-induced currents are small compared to the oceans of current, for example, Guinea current and Quanta current. Finally, Arafua and surrounding villages are prone to flooding as a result of the low-laying areas and in case of overtopping and flooding, the result could be life-threatening to the local residents in this area. There are four challenges in this project. First, the high energetic environment with long swell wave which is not being responsible for the highly dynamic beaches but also for pushing designers and contractors beyond their comfort zone. Two, forced to adapt to the local conditions and to be creative during the design and execution of the works in order to find alternative workable solutions that still fit into the tight budget and the project requirement. 3. In front of fear Athletic Swell, the town of Ada is threatened by the sea, where every year the sea takes more than 1.5 from the coastal line where several buildings are washed away every season. Finally, the never-ending erosions call for human interventions in order to save Ada. That is where the Ministry of Water Resources, Work and Housing of Ghana took the initiative to set up a major coastal protection project. Oh well, there are many types of plants involved in the project but we are only going to focus on two types of plant, which are excavator and dredger. As you can see in the picture on my on my right, the excavator is doing some some excavation works alongside the beach. So the function, the main function of, of the excavator to to move lots of soil from 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 an area to the to the site. Meanwhile, a dredger functions as, as a pumping machine which pumps out sand, sand out of from the seabed into, into the above of the land as you can see in the picture on my right. Did you know there are several maintenance policies adopted in the project? So, the first strategy to maintain the beach is by constructing a coastline protective structures which are to be composed of beach nourishments and groins. Well, the groins are to be built of armor rocks of about 8 to 10 ton equally spaced with increasing length eastwards. It is to ensure easy accessibility to turtles and fishermen. 
the beach nourishment will not be very steep according to Bolan at Altum 2011. Well, bearing sand winding and storm quarrying along the coast, we improve the ability of the coastline, which is to absorb high tidal wave impacts, thus minimizing erosion and flooding. Other measures that often adopted include sand nourishment without any protective structures. Well, sand nourishment of eroding coastlines has been found has been found to be effective and efficient in managing eroding coastlines in the Netherlands. Moving on to this figure, as you can see from my, from my right, the figure 9 shows that there are two types of uh, figure which is A and B. A shown that armor rocks being transported to the coastline in preparation towards the building of the sea defense wall. The sea defense wall acts as a sea protection structure as I mentioned previous in the previous slide. We meanwhile, uh, the B figures is shown proper structures, breakwaters, and beach nourishment which is adapted from Bolan et al. 2011. Aha! Uh -huh, this figure is shown the comparison of area campaign 6 and 7 which is uh, um, in the top and below both are nourishment works compartment between groins B and A B is on the left A is on the right which is uh, one of the phase in the two phase project area for the, for the other C defense project As we go near into the conversion of the, our case study, well, do you mind to hear it from us? What we can say from this case study, there are many construction projects in remote areas. Challenges that are to be faced during the studies is design and the execution of the other coastal protection project. In this case, challenge included, they, they are responsible for the highly dynamic beaches, but also pushing designers and contractors beyond their comfort zone. This meant that during the project, designers and contractors were forced to adapt to the local condition and to be creative during the design and the execution of the works in order to find alternative, workable solutions that still fit into the tight budget and the, pro the project requirements. Well, despite the, all the challenges, well, it is possible to conclude that a technically sound and robust design responding to client requirements and within the established budget has been delivered, which further an, effic an efficient construction method which makes use of temporary steel jetties, allows land-based construction of the submersible mount groins, and warrants a precise and concise execution of the works was applied. We are going to the end. Thank you for listening to our video presentation. Thank you. But wait, wait. We got bonus video here included also. Keep watching till the end. <laughs> Thank you.